Welcome to video lecture two, part one on St. Thomas Aquinas' teaching of, of the good, the bad, the beautiful, uh, and the ugly. I'm going to start today's class the way I uh, do repeatedly uh, for new classes uh, with a review of the topics of discussion from the last class, which consisted of eight. Uh, the first one was about an introduction to the, the way the course will be conducted, a background about me, uh, and about the, the job or, or business of the philosopher uh, to pursue uh, wisdom, uh, which consists in knowing uh, the order of things, uh, uh, which for St. Thomas basically consists in knowing uh, the, the order of perfections uh, in the universe uh, as consisting basically of part-whole relationships or more simply the way I put it as uh, as organizations. Uh, St. Thomas sees uh, the created universe as being an order of descent of perfections uh, uh, or of imperfections of likeness uh, to the divine perfection uh, which consists in perfect possession of existence. Uh, he considers the, 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 so knowing the order of all, all things was the second topic we discussed. Then we went into the meaning of good cons considered in general as having the act of existing uh, or essay. Uh, that is, uh, the, the order of perfection in the universe uh, it relates to good in as much as good is a way of being perfect. Huh? Uh, the the uh, that which is absolutely good, good in all respects, uh, is uh, absolutely perfect. The notion of good involves, for St. Thomas, being complete, and with respect to composite wholes, it means having all of the parts that are, are necessarily uh, required for being the kind of organization uh, that uh, uh, one happens to be talking about. Uh, so good and being an organized whole uh, with respect to most everything, everything aside from God, uh, is what St. Thomas means by good. Simply means being, uh, in its most precise sense, uh, being complete. Uh, the uh, next topic we went into was the goodness of God as absolute perfection. Uh, then forms as likenesses of divine perfection, principles of order and hierarchy. Uh, the descent from God uh, uh, through this order of perfections is is, this, is descent through uh, uh, through likenesses of uh, of form. Huh? Uh, the forms being uh, the principles of uh, the chief principles of organization uh, uh, within uh, composite wholes. Uh, the uh, uh, the sixth topic that we discussed were how forms of composite whole uh, precisely consist in being generating principles of order uh, existing in and through the arrangement of parts. We'll go into that more today. How divine perfection, goodness, and beauty is the efficient cause uh, of all uh, existence, plurality, diversity, and harmony in the universe. And last, how unequal having <clears throat> as, as, a, as a cause of all plurality, diversity, difference, and order uh, in, um, in general and of species and things. Huh? The um, uh, forms, in a way, huh, are simply principles of having, more or less perfect principles of having. Uh, they're, they're very comparable to what today we would call conductors. Huh? So, uh, St. Thomas see, uh, sees the universe being composed of uh, an unequal order of quality in quality of, of, of different kinds of conductors, which he calls forms, uh, which for him are intensive quantities uh, or virtual quantities. They're qualities, basically. Huh? Uh, but qualities that are part of the existence that constitutes 
the nature or substance or essence of a of a thing. Huh? So you might say that they're the chief qualities uh, through which existence is possessed, is held huh? uh, by a diversity of, of things uh, in the created order uh, and also possessed by God. Huh? But God possesses uh, forms in a, a, a perfect way. Matter, uh, for St. Thomas, uh, uh, possesses form and distributes form. So the quality of the matter is going to be related to the diversification of, uh, of, of, of species, of genera and species throughout the universe, chiefly in respect to an individual substance and the way a substance is divided into a nature, into a quantified substance and a qualified substance that depends upon its matter. Huh? So the, 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 different, uh, the differentiation or the, diversi the diversification of material beings is going to depend on the quality of the matter being able to conduct the activity of the form. Huh? Uh, uh, one of the most amazing things that I've come across in, in uh, investigating the teaching of St. Thomas over a number of decades is the extent to which he uses the term perfection. Uh, it's just probably the, uh, w one of the most uh, used terms uh, in, in, throughout his works. Uh, the other thing you can't help but notice is the, uh, is the Neoplatonic influence on his thinking uh, as a descent from uh, uh, divine perfection uh, and the role that this plays huh, uh, in, his, in his teaching. Once again, Perfection for St. Thomas means more or less what we would, we would refer to today as being complete. So uh, uh, the fact that he uses it uh, um, is, uh, should not be surprising. Nothing, according to St. Thomas, operates huh, uh, unless it has all of the parts that are needed for it to be a complete whole, or today what we'd call an organization. Now. Uh, regarding uh, today's discussion, this is chiefly going to, to, to focus attention on good and evil, huh? but more precisely on evil because we focused uh, a good deal of time on the notion of good the last time. But what we're starting out with is uh, St. Thomas's teaching on the nature of providence uh, and how he considers providence to be related to divine perfection. According to him, all things, all created things, are ruled by divine providence because to be ruled by something huh, is to be set in motion by it to, to, to an end. That is, uh, what, what moves according to St. Thomas only moves to the extent that it's, it's, it's what he calls uh, a, uh, an active potency. That is, it's a reactive kind of power, one that uh, when stimulated by a, a, um, a, a, an agent capable of causing it to move, it moves toward that agent. Uh, and there is a, 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 natural, a, a natural kind of a, uh, an agent uh, that stimulates uh, uh, these active powers or faculties uh, in, in, in things which he calls a formal object. Uh, there are also other kinds of, uh, of uh, stimuli that can interrupt huh? uh, the, uh, uh, the inclination uh, that is, is generated uh, uh, within this active potency. An act, a, a potency is not simply something that is a capability or something passive. It's that which, when stimulated, uh, uh, generates uh, action uh, uh, because uh, it is being moved by an attracting force, an attracting cause uh, to union with that cause, like the faculty of seeing or the faculty of hearing, uh, are, are naturally inclined uh, uh, to maintain themselves in existence uh, uh, through unity with their cause. Uh, so. Divine providence is simply the activation right, of the universe um, by God, of this multitude of order, huh, of imperfect ways of having, uh, uh, the, 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 the divine possession 
uh, of existence, the act of existing, qualitatively different uh, ways of possessing. Uh, and, and God orders that, uh, uh, that multitude of more or less perfect ways of having existence uh, toward uh, union uh, uh, with God uh, <clears throat> through uh, uh, inclinations uh, that they have, uh, each of these uh, composite wholes has. And he calls this, St. Thomas calls this providence. Uh, uh, it's uh, simply the way in which um, uh, God directs um, uh, things toward God. Um, the, the end of a thing uh, is actually the first cause of a thing. It's what stimulates the thing, and it remains in contact with the thing so long as the thing is moving. So, so in a way, the desire to get from one location to another by, by, by driving an automobile has the end huh? uh, in, the, in the mind of the driver. Uh, and you can be deflected from your chief end uh, throughout the, 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 the course of an activity. But if you didn't have a, an external stimulus for St. Thomas, uh, uh, an agent, uh, an act of potency would never move. Huh? If there were no color stimulating the eye, it wouldn't see. Uh, if you have an indefinite number of, of, of subjects, an infinite number, for example, uh, uh, that could activate uh, something, they would all be equally uh, capable of activation and, and, and none of them uh, would, be, would be moving it. Uh, this is why moving, it, moving is like an act of desire in, in, uh, that is in, in agents that don't possess an intellect. Uh, and in agents that do possess one, uh, there's a direct intention to move toward the end. Uh, uh, the, without that direct intention, uh, you, uh, you, you have no external stimulus. That's why it makes no sense to say that mo motion just occurs at random uh, uh, and it has no definite direction. Uh, there is no movement that we know of that moves uh, uh, without a, a, some, some kind of general direction toward it. Uh, uh, the, um, the genus of a thing, according to St. Thomas, contains order. Uh, uh, it's uh, so the universe resembles uh, uh, a, a genus, uh, 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 as, as he sees it. Uh, it's not exactly the same as a genus, <clears throat> because a genus is the proximate cause uh -huh. uh, uh, or, or subject huh, of a, a multitude uh, that is uh, what St. Thomas calls the common matter of something. Uh -huh. Uh, so precisely speaking, something it was in the genus because it's material. But er, after the fashion, he says of a genus, uh, angels, for example, are, are in, in, uh, constitute genera. Uh, the um, um, and uh, the whole created order can be considered to to be like a a genera. Uh, in fact, uh, to to uh, to. The whole notion of order is related to being in a genus, there being a hierarchy uh, of more or less perfection, uh, uh, like the genus of health uh, uh, with, re within, with respect to medical science. Uh, uh, things are more or less healthy. Uh, that, that's an order of possession right? uh, of the end, uh, which is the form uh, of, of a thing. Yeah? Uh, existing in more or less perfect ways. So, and every agent, according to St. Thomas, acts for an end, and that end is its good, uh, because uh, the end is that, that which brings this active potency within a thing uh, to completion, uh, to, or to maturity, as we might say today. Perfection being a, a, a kind of mature development, uh, having all the parts that are needed for something to act as an organized whole or as a unit. Um, God rules, according to St. Thomas in the universe, uh, he, um, he rules creatures less perfect huh? uh, by creatures more perfect in goodness. Uh, he creatures less perfect in goodness, less, uh, less qualitatively perfect, huh? less qualitatively strong uh, by beings that are uh, are more qualitatively strong. So he's conceiving of the universe as a co communications network uh, in which divine likeness, divine perfection uh, is, uh, uh, is being ordered 
uh, unequally uh, to display uh, the, the greatness uh, of the divine perfection, which is the only way in which God can cause. It's not like God is e being egotistical, uh, but to share goodness. The only way God can share goodness uh, is by uh, sharing a divine likeness, because causes are likenesses uh, uh, of the agent. Uh, and God multiplies uh, the, 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 the quality of organizational holes uh, uh, throughout this, this, this order uh, or hierarchy of, of uh, forms and beings uh, in order as, as, uh, as much as possible and as widely as possible uh, to reflect divine perfection and divine goodness. Uh, the, um, the existence of um, <clears throat> The, um, uh, this order uh, suggests to St. Thomas the existence of an angelic order uh, the, uh, above uh, the, uh, the order of, uh, of human beings, uh, uh, which consists of higher intellectual uh, uh, beings, angels, uh, the highest being the seraphim, then the cherubim, cherubim then, then, then thrones. Uh, and and St. Thomas considers this order of perfection and in intelligence uh, to be more or less um, um, related to or reflecting huh? uh, the, uh, the perfection of uh, intellectual operation uh, or understanding. That is, uh, the, the, the more perfect a, an intellect is, according to him, the more things it knows uh, with fewer ideas. Uh, and uh, he, he sees the, the, the highest angelic order. I, I'm not going to go into this in, in enormous detail, but he continues it throughout the different uh, angelic orders uh, and, and their, their, their subdivisions. Uh, it's, it's based upon the perfection of, of action, uh, the way things operate uh, in, um, uh, in nature. Uh, uh, in natural kinds of operations and in operations generated by uh, uh, things nature. Uh, the, the fewer number of, of acts that you need to perform in order widely to influence things and the less dependent you are on other beings, the more perfect you are as an agent. Uh, well, with respect to understanding, the more things you know with fewer ideas, the, the, the better the quality of your intellect. Uh, the seraphim, according to St. Thomas, uh, more or less is like an, an inner sea, a part of an inner circle uh, with, a, uh, uh, with God, who's like the CEO of the universe. Huh? And so uh, it, 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 this being is privileged, is privy to uh, what today we would call the, the, the divine strategic plan. Uh, knows uh, 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 what God is, is seeking to effect to cause, huh? uh, the way God is causing it, and the role that that being is playing in uh, the, uh, this, this order of creation. Huh? Uh, because uh, according to St. Th Thomas, there's a, there's a twofold order of goodness uh, in the universe. One, the goodness of the nature of the thing, and the goodness of some things to lead other beings to, uh, to God. Huh? Uh, the, uh, so. Uh, the seraphim understands this best. The, the cherubim, uh, 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 all, all of these angelic orders know directly in God. Uh, they see the divine essence. Huh? But some see better the effects, uh, the extent of, of creation, uh, and are more, more directly involved in it. Uh, uh, the seraphim hel helps the cherubim to understand uh, the extent of this. Uh, uh, of God's of God's influence, and so not knowing the strategic plan, they basically basically know the tactical plan, huh? and they communicate the tactic the, the the tactical plan to the thrones, huh? uh, who are uh, involved in uh, uh, in executing uh, the plan uh, uh, throughout the created universe. Uh, uh, and know their role uh, in this, but they don't know the extent of the effects uh, of the uh, the activities uh, and, and order which God is, uh, is executing, uh, or as intimately the chief reason why. Right? Uh, the uh, now uh, below this order of angels, Saint Thomas conceives of. Uh, 
uh, like Aristotle does, uh, beings that are made up of an incorruptible matter, huh? uh, and they're influenced by uh, the, an uh, the angelic order uh, in, the, uh, in their behavior. And uh, the, the, we, we, we uh, today uh, uh, pay very close attention to uh, environmental changes and conditions and the way that these are influenced uh, by, uh, uh, by uh, uh, forces uh, within the heavens huh? uh, and um, like climate change, uh, the influence of the sun and the moon. Huh? Uh, and and uh, other uh, other activities like of comets, uh, uh, of of uh, fields of gravitation uh, uh, on the, the 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 seasons in the Earth, for example, huh? uh, climate change, a very big uh, uh, issue uh, today. Saint Thomas uh, uh, is very much aware of this, as 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 Aristotle was with respect to the doctrine of there being a kind of a natural place that is a natural environment. Uh, in which different substances tend to exist. Well, the natural environment uh, of, of human beings is, uh, is on the earth, and uh, this uh, being physical beings, uh, the movement of uh, planetary bodies, uh, of, of, of heavenly activities, uh, has an impact upon uh, what goes on uh, on the earth. Uh, he maintains that this does not directly influence uh, the, the, uh, the human intellect because the in human intellect is immaterial. Uh, it does not uh, function uh, 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 depend, totally dependent upon a, uh, organs of the body except uh, to, to get images uh, chiefly uh, uh, through which uh, it can, can abstract ideas and intellectually uh, uh, make, uh, form conceptions uh, and, and make judgments and reason. Uh, the same thing with respect to the will. Uh, the will is not determined uh, by Saint Tom, according to Saint Thomas, uh, by uh, ma external material uh, activities uh, uh, or by uh, the the influence of uh, planetary uh, uh, planetary bodies. Uh, the um, this gets us into the topic of how good and evil uh, are in things, huh? and. Uh, uh, according to St. Thomas, uh, uh, good and evil uh, are in things uh, in relationship to a chief end desired. Huh? Uh, the, uh, the, the good uh, being uh, the end uh, for our nature and pursued by operation. Uh, uh, the good consists in being completely whole, as I've said, according to having all the parts which are proportionate uh, to uh, uh, to a an organizational whole uh, to perform its organizational operation. Uh, evil he considers to be a privation that exists within the potency, this active potency of a an agent, chiefly within the active potency. It's also in the passive potency to receive, to be receptive, uh, and it it and. It's a privation. Now, calling it a privation means does not mean it's an absence. Huh? It means it's a resistance. Huh? Uh, the the forms of things uh, contain within them a kind of qualitative greatness, uh, an int intensive quantity limit of receptivity and resistance uh, uh, to uh, to existence. And matter contains within it a. A, a receptivity and resistance at limit huh? uh, to the reception of organization and the reception of of the unity and harmonization of parts. Um, the uh, so uh, evil is in a thing chiefly for Saint Thomas in the potency of a thing uh, to be receptive to uh, 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 to um, um, to I'm sorry, to be resistant. Huh? to uh, the uh, proper form of a thing <clears throat> being uh, that, that external stimulus. For example, uh, w blindness uh, within the, the faculty of sight is a resistance to the external stimulus of color uh, on, uh, on the power of sight uh, and the reactive ability of the faculty of sight uh, 
uh, to uh, to see. It's not simply an absence. It's an absence of. Uh, it's a, a resistance huh? uh, within the power the, uh, of the, of the faculty to engage in the it, the act proportionate. Uh, uh, to that stimulus, or which it's inclined to do, because it, the the active potency has a natural attraction to exercise its act, and that act that it's exercising is its good. Huh? It's the influence of its end on it. Huh? Uh, providence for St. Thomas is like the direction that the archer gives to an arrow to hit the target. It's always there. It's always influencing it uh, to the extent that it moves. Right? And, and, but there is also a potential uh, within a power uh, to react to a number of forms. And when you get one form that is received into a thing, it inclines to drive out another form. And if it drives out its proper form, huh, then well, what it does is it causes an, an imperfection in the organization. Right? So um, evil is um, founded, according to St. Thomas, uh, uh, in good. Right? And it's not directly intended. Uh, it's not directly intended by the cause of the universe, for example. But God, God indirectly intends it because the only way that God, God can, uh, can cause the universe is by causing imperfectly existing beings, uh, uh, which contain s some degree of evil, uh, some quality of evil. Uh, so God, in creating the universe, is using using evil in a way, uh, uh, not total evil, uh, but an evil, uh, an imperfection uh, within a subject, an ontological evil, not a moral evil or a metaphysical evil, as, as some might say. Uh, so um, good uh, and evil uh, have to be considered with respect to being a defect in the, uh, the the the, uh, the, uh, the activity of a subject uh, and and evil cannot exist uh, without a subject in which to inhere um, the um, good is an ordered multitude uh, the good uh, good as an ordered multitude is related to being one to being complete to being whole to having an appetite for exercising a proper activity uh, and uh, achieving a specific end. We've just been talking about the uh, relationship of good and evil uh, to uh, an end uh, and to, uh, uh, to holes, and to parts. And what I want to take up with now is how good and evil are related to uh, the one and the many. Uh, uh, they're related in the sense that uh, within an organization or within a composite whole, uh, the parts function as a many, as principles uh, uh, that generate out of which the, the whole or the organization grows. Uh, so the one organization is generated by the relationship of the parts. And uh, according to St. According to Thomas uh, and to Aristotle, uh, w the the form of a thing that's present within an organization uh, generates um, a uh, a hierarchy, an order of of, of parts, going from a, a most perfect to a least perfect uh, part, uh, that which uh, most completely possesses the end, uh, which is the form. Uh, that is being sought to be generated in, in, in a mature fashion, uh, in a completed way, uh, as it exists uh, uh, in a, an underdeveloped form uh, within the, the beginnings of the organization. Uh, so the, the beginning of a thing and the end of a thing are, strictly speaking, the form uh, that has been generated into the thing from an external stimulus or from a formal object. Uh, God has created different beings to be different types of organizations and has caused within them uh, an organization of a principled 
uh, out of which, that is the form, out of which an organization of parts grows. That principle is essentially related to uh, the exertion of the causal activity of God on, uh, on everything in the universe by causing those things to exist and giving them their natures. So God, throughout the, the existence of, of anything, for example, in a, in a human being, is the cause of the existence of this individual human nature that makes it the composite whole which it is. Right? Uh, and so that, that, that form of a thing huh, is a principle of organization that is essentially activated huh, and continue to be maintained in existence uh, by the preserving power of God. The, um, uh, so um, uh, in the organization, that principle uh, displays the quality of its activity within the cooperation of the parts uh, out of which the organizational unity grows. The form, recall, is a principle of organization. It's a principle of unity. That principle of unity exists within the parts. Huh? So within any organization, the, the, the form uh, is uh, displayed, uh, made evident uh, in the harmony uh, of the parts. That harmonization of the parts uh, in relationship to the end uh, is, is, consists in the goodness of the parts, their ability harmoniously to cooperate, uh, to, uh, to generate the organizational whole uh, that that organization is organized by God to be. Uh, and to the extent that uh, a, a, a being uh, complete, completely uh, possesses uh, that organizational form, it's strong uh, and perfect. Huh? Uh, the difference between a being being good and a being being perfect is that that which is perfect is intensely good. Uh, that, uh, uh, something which is, is good partakes of the form of the organization. Uh, any member that belongs to an organization as part of that organization is a good of the organization. Uh, from the private in the army up to the general, uh, the, 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 the being most, most deprived uh, or, or least uh, possessed of the perfec perfection of the organizational uh, uh, good uh, is nonetheless a member of the organization. That which most intensely possesses it more perfectly possesses and understands the organizational good and transmits it, transmits that, uh, uh, that uh, understanding, uh, at least among human beings, to other parts of the organization. Uh, in, with respect to uh, non-intellectual beings, this being communicates uh, the harmony uh, of, of relationship among the parts uh, uh, by uh, uh, by uh, dominating uh, over them, by in some way being more intense or stronger uh, in uh, organizing and ordering uh, the way the parts uh, uh, are directed uh, toward the whole, huh? uh, or to the end of the whole, being whatever the whole happens to be. Uh, the, um, now, good and evil then exist within an organization. Um, uh, on the basis of the relation, in, in a twofold way, on a relationship of parts to parts, and on a relationship to all of the parts to the end. Right? Uh, the organization uh, can fail uh, on the basis of individual parts not exercising their proportionate activity, uh, uh, not, not doing uh, what they are capable of doing to, to maintain in, in a ma with maxim maximum intensity. Uh, to maintain themselves as good parts, uh, and the and the and the parts uh, as uh, uh, as a whole uh, being uh, related to uh, at the end of the organization and f and fully achieving the end of the organization. The um, so uh, the the every organization for St. Thomas is made up of contrary opposites, huh? opposites that most perfectly and le least perfectly. 
uh, manifest uh, the good of the organization uh, uh, with respect to seeking the end right, and harmonizing the relationships. So, so essentially, the good uh, the, or the good and evil that exist within composite wholes exist chiefly in harmonization uh, of the parts. Uh, that's where the strength of the organization lies, and that's where the unity of the organization lies. Huh? Uh, every finite good right, has, has parts which, which harmoniously or not harmoniously cooperate huh, to, uh, to maintain uh, their unity uh, with the end, uh, which uh, is, the, is the perfection and the mature development of the organization. Uh, once activated, all of the parts seek to maintain themselves in good relationship. Uh, and that, that's the case whether you're talking about intelligent or, or non-intelligent beings. Uh, now, given the fact that, that evil uh, exists as part of uh, an accidental feature, St. Thomas calls it an accident existing within a potency, uh, uh, he thinks that it's impossible for there to be an evil nature, uh, just like uh, God is, is, is a, 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 a perfect good. It's impossible for there to be a perfection in evil because evil corrodes, it corrupts the, pa the power of, of a thing. The natural inclination of things uh, is to, is to um, move away from evil and toward, and toward good. Uh, so uh, uh, the, a, 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 a perfectly evil being, a, something which would be evil in its essence, uh, would, be, uh, would be totally corrupt. Uh, uh, it, it, it would consume its host. Uh, it would be totally resistant uh, to engaging in action and moving toward, it, toward its end. St. Thomas uh, gives numerous arguments uh, to show uh, how uh, a, a, an evil uh, nature uh, cannot exist, and he does so to uh, to combat the, the different heresies, among other things, especially Manichaeism. Uh, the um, evil, uh, therefore, has to be desired when it's desired uh, as a kind of incomplete good. Uh, it's nothing. No, nothing that is desired can be totally evil because it would be totally non-existent. Huh? What makes something desirable is to the extent that it has some kind of a form uh, that is existing in some way. Right? So uh, a, t a, total, a totally corrupted form huh, uh, uh, would be a totally non-existent one, which means the thing would have no unity. Huh? Uh, a, a composite whole would, be, would not be made up of parts at all, because they couldn't coexist. Hmm? Uh, According to St. Thomas, there are, uh, there are two kinds of, of, of evil, one of, in nature and one in action. And the evil in nature is consequent upon the evil in action. I mean, uh, the evil in action is consequent upon the evil, uh, the evil in nature. Uh, this, if you recall the scholastic principle, agere sequiturese, things act according to the ty type of being that they have, or the kind of nature that they have, using the term essay, as was sometimes done in, during the Middle Ages uh, and later, uh, to refer to an ends, or a being, or a nature. Uh, the, uh, within, uh, within a composite whole, the potency, uh, the act, uh, uh, and the completed nature, uh, none of them can be totally evil. Right? The potency has an inclination toward good because it's a it has the inclination to act huh? to have a relationship to good. Good, the form is good by nature, huh? uh, in an ontological sense, and the composite whole, right? uh, as as inclined to adhere adhere to to the parts into a whole, uh, is also a good. Uh, so um, the um, uh, uh, the, the, these two types of evil in, in, uh, in nature and, and action, uh, when considered in relationship to human beings uh, and, and human behavior uh, in relationship to the, to the intellect and the will, take on the character of, of, of three types of actions. 
voluntary, involuntary, and non-voluntary. And we'll talk about this more when we're talking about St. Thomas's moral teaching, both in the Summa and in his commentary on, on Aristotle's Nicomachean Ethics. Uh, but um, uh, for now, uh, it's simply important to recognize that uh, for intelligent agents, St. Thomas does, understands that some, some actions are, go, go uh, against the direction of a thing's nature uh, or in opposition to what a, a human being directly intends. Uh, and those are, uh, those are violent actions. Those are inv uh, involuntary actions. Uh, and, and, and natural actions because they're not acts of a will or non-voluntary, uh, and actions performed out of ignorance uh, are involuntary unless the ignorance is intentionally desired uh, uh, by a person. And some actions, he also says, are, are non-voluntary in a way because they're mixed. They're partly voluntary, partly not voluntary, like throwing goods overboard and, you know, and, uh, to... Uh, on a, on a ship at sea so that the ship doesn't, doesn't sink. Huh? Uh, the, um, this gets us into St. Thomas's discussion about Adam and Eve and, and uh, the existence of, of uh, Adam and Eve in the state of origin, what was called original justice, huh? where uh, human nature, Adam and Eve represent human nature, uh, uh, or, or, or the first man does. Huh? Uh, and from the first man, the first woman, Eve. Uh, uh, they uh, represent human nature uh, as uh, uh, existing in an original state of justice, meaning an original harmony uh, where they are inclined to obey uh, what God tells them to do. Uh, the, uh, the, the temptation huh, is uh, a, um, a, an act of seduction. Huh? Uh, where uh, where uh, Eve uh, is pers persuaded uh, by Satan uh, uh, to desire uh, uh, knowledge uh, uh, the and the pleasure that that that, that goes along with it, uh, which is natural uh, for human beings to know, uh, and 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 or and and to. Uh, uh, tend to tend to doubt uh, God's uh, 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 statement that uh, if you eat of the, tr the the fruit of the tree of good and knowledge, huh? which is for Saint Thomas a tree of knowledge about uh, obedience and disobedience, huh? that you're going to uh, you're going to die. Uh, so um, the uh, uh, Eve's sin uh, is more complicated for as Saint Thomas sees it. Uh, then is is that of Adams, and it, it more or less appears to represent human nature uh, in uh, the uh, uh, concupiscible appetite uh, uh, and uh, in the and uh, in, in, in the act of pride um, um, being uh, uh, distrustful, huh? Uh, in, in an act of not only an act of pride but an act of infidelity. Saint Thomas describes it as with respect to Eve, plus uh, an act of, of gluttony and an act of uh, curiosity uh, in, the, in the sense that uh, not just being curious in the normal sense we use it today, but in the, uh, in the sense that it was sometimes used in the, in the Middle Ages of seeking to know things that you really don't know. You know, that you don't have a privilege to know or it's not your business. Uh, sticking your nose where <laughs> in other people's business. Uh, and finally, the act of disobedience. So Eve's, Eve's act is prideful, an act of curiosity, an act of gluttony, uh, also in the sense of intemperance, an act of infidelity and, in, and disobedience. Um, the, uh, now, uh, that um, uh, gets us into uh, the last couple of points here, uh, which are the effects of this uh, action. Uh, St. Thomas sees the immediate effect of this action uh, is uh, the, the disorder, disharmony uh, within human nature where uh, the, the appetites which had been inclined to take direction from human reason, the, the will and the, and the emotions, the higher and lower emotions, which we'll talk about, uh, they, they now tend to battle against one another. Huh? 
uh, and and it, it it had been the the the, the power of God uh, uh, that uh, was sustained in Adam and Eve that prevented them from becoming corrupted in their appetites uh, uh, and from not dying. Now, having disobeyed, uh, by committing the sin of disobedience, uh, the tree of knowledge uh, represents uh, some kind of incidental activity uh, that uh, you know, uh, the, uh, Adam and Eve are told uh, uh, not, to, not to engage in. Uh, uh, and, uh, uh, it, it, it gives them the opportunity to choose their own individual freedom over, uh, over obedience uh, to God. Once they choose that, they make that choice whether to, uh, to, to, to have the opportunity to exercise their own individual freedom uh, through obedience uh, to divine direction or, or not, uh, uh, they gain a kind of a, a knowledge of, of what a living uh, in rebellion against taking directive from the law of God uh, involves what its full implications are. Uh, and that corruption, uh, uh, had that, in, that, that incorruption, uh, that, that, that harmony uh, of the appetites had been maintained by, uh, uh, by God in, uh, in human nature before this, uh, this sin. Uh, uh, human human beings, human nature, human beings. Adam could have died, and so could Eve, uh, in the uh, uh, in the garden, uh, in this in this condition of original justice. But they were prevented to, uh, from from doing so uh, uh, by uh, a special uh, kind of uh, of supernatural uh, uh, power of God. Uh, that's been removed, so uh, the corruption of the appetite leads to also uh, to physical death. Thank you very much.